every now and then as I go through these Capture One tutorials, I'm going to pass along an amazing tip to you. You'll be like, whoa, that just saves me so much time. That is so awesome. Really awesome, clever Capture One Operation Nirvana. If you see one of those, you know you're in for a treat. Roll that intro. Hi everyone and welcome to pal to tech This is lesson number two of the Capture One series of workshops that I am doing. If you have not yet seen lesson number one, please make sure you do so before watching this video. Today we're going to take a deeper dive into the layout of Capture One, but more importantly, importing photos and getting you very familiar with and giving some tips on how to use the tool tabs, the tools, the sliders, and so forth. So I have the folder right here on my desktop. Now, in theory, I could just drag and drop it right into Capture One. When I do that, it basically shows it as an open folder right here, kind of in the file structure of my computer. We're not gonna do that. We're actually gonna go through the import process, which is what I recommend you do. The first thing you wanna be sure you do when you have a new session and you're about to import is click on the Capture folder. Remember, Capture One creates those four folders. The idea is that the capture folder is the folder that you are bringing all of your photos into. Then the next thing you want to do is click import right up here. That will open the import window. And of course, there are a number of options here. You can make the thumbnails larger, smaller. You can sort the photos. It's showing you where you're importing from the DCIM. If you have folders within that, you can tick the box that says include subfolders. The most important set setting here is the destination. That's where it says capture folder. Make sure it says capture folder. You could of course import it somewhere else if you have that workflow set up. What's also really nice is you can choose another location to back them up at the same time you're doing the import. You could tick backup enabled and then choose a folder to back it up to while it's doing the import. Next is you can change the names around. This is really nice and here it gives you, if you click on this little three dot thing, this gives you a whole bunch of items. They're called tokens. Right now, there's one token under format. If I do nothing else, when it brings these photos into Capture One, they're going to be the image name. That's what they're going to be called for each file. But I could change all that. I mean, I could literally bring them in under the current date. Boom. I can do multiple tokens. You see, now it'll be image name and date. And you can sort the tokens by all kinds of things, you know, EXIF data, camera information. For example, here, I could call it image name, current date, and then, you know, the model of the camera. You could also save these as a preset to use when you import images. Metadata is pretty simple, you know. You can add a copyright to each image right here. Next are adjustments. Now I'm going to do a whole section on the difference between styles and presets and all of that sort of thing. We're not going to get into that right at this portion of the Capture One tutorial, but just know that here you could add pre-built styles upon import, which will be a huge time saver. For now, we'll just say none. And this just shows you the file info. Down here, you could choose to eject card or erase images after copying. First of all, eject card is great if you're getting it straight from the SD card that's on your computer. Remember for this demo, I had actually put the folder from the SD card right here on the computer first. But if I had just taken the SD card and put it into the computer, then I could tick this box down here and once Capture One has finished importing all of these images, it would eject the card. One thing you do not want to do and that is erase images off the card. So I'm just going to say this straight out. Never, and I mean never, tick the box that says erase images after copying. If you ever want to erase images off an SD card, you do so when you're out at your very next shoot and it's weeks later and you have your SD card, then you can format it in the camera because you know it's safe because you've already processed all those images. Don't do it now. Okay, once we're done, simply click import all. So it's bringing them in at the same time it's also generating previews. Now, obviously straight away, keep in mind we are in the capture folder. That's where we imported the photos 
two. If I go into my session folder, my actual Capture One session folder on my Mac, I can see the actual file. If I look at Capture, there they are. These are all the files. And as I mentioned in my prior video, there are three other folders that come into play as well. These are the basic steps that I take with every single photo that I edit. Step number one is lenses, corrections, and profile. This also includes some very basic cropping. Step number two is composition. This is where I decide how I want the photo rotated, how I want it cropped, and so forth, and also where I fix basic things like making sure my horizon line is level. Step number three is styles and presets. Here I will add various presets, some of which are there to just save me time. Step number four is exposure and white balance. I want to be sure I've got both of those correct before I start getting into the creative fun art part of it. Step number five is one of my favorites color. Step number six are the targeted fixes I do. Fixing dust spots, dodging and burning, sharpening, that sort of thing. And step number seven is export. The reason why I pull this out as a separate step is because how you sharpen your photo will depend on where you're exporting it. And it's really important that you get this step correct. Not just sharpening, but also how you name your photos, where you're storing them, because that's going to come back later on for example, when a client sends back a list of which photos they liked, you can take that list and there's a little tip I'm going to show you, not in this video, but soon enough, where you can take an emailed list from your client and have a photo album created in Capture One ready for you to edit based on their favorite photos within just a couple clicks of a button. That's coming. Pause the video right now and jot down what are the steps you take when you edit photos. Write those down and then come back and finish watching the rest of this video. Okay, I am in Capture One right now. I've just imported my photos and I am looking at my saved workspace with my steps, with the way I work, okay? But first, just so you know, if you go to Window, Workspace, Default, that will reset everything in case you make a mistake or you need to put the program back to the state it was in when you installed it, choose default. So this is what it probably looks like for most of you right now. So here the idea is that you go through a process from left to right. The problem is I kept getting confused and tripped up on these icons. They don't make sense to me. So for example, this little gear icon, I think that that's where I change the settings for Capture One. I don't realize that that's where I export Port. You see what I mean? It, it's, it's confusing. So, Capture One allows you to completely change this, and I did. I called mine Pal Detect, but you can save and delete them from here. And if you update your workspace, what you need to do, there's no update workspace choice. Simply save over and call it the same name as the workspace you're updating. Okay, so here is my workspace right here. And as you can see, it looks a lot different than the default workspace that comes with the program. But I have customized it based on my seven step workflow. So I always keep on the extreme left side, my library, my filters and tags, all that stuff in the icon on the left. The next one is information. That's where I have my metadata, keywords and that sort of thing. What I did here was, you see, like I have step one. And remember in my workflow, I said step one was fixing lens problems and chromatic aberration, that, that kind of thing. Step two, as you can see, is where I do my rotating and cropping and that matches my workflow as my step two. So question of the day, why don't I continue these with step three, four, and five? Because Capture One only allows you to have up to four custom icons. So what happened was I had created four, one, two, three, four. I went to create five and it didn't, it wouldn't do it. What I did was I stopped it to, I went, all right, step one, step two. All right, well, that looks like exposure. So that'll be where I do all my exposure stuff. That looks like color to me. That makes sense. So that's where I'll do all my color stuff. That's targeted adjustments and, you know, spot removal. Okay, that makes sense. And then I customized the export one. I got rid of that gear thing, which makes no sense. And I made it look like, you know, 
you know, a piece of printed paper or a web page, something to look like it's exported somewhere. What I would prefer is to just have them going across one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, you know, that kind of thing. Now, what you do to create these kind of custom buttons is you right click here and you add a tool tab. They're called tool tabs. So for example, they have pre-built tool tabs right here, like black and white, you see that? Boom, that's a black and white tool tab. But I don't need that one because I've already moved a lot of those things into other tabs that make sense for me. And so you can remove a tool tab very easily. Just go to remove tool tab and choose the name of it and then go ahead and remove it, see? But if you wanna add a custom icon and a custom tool tab, so here's what I do. Right click it, add a tool tab, custom tool tab, and then you get this little dialog box right here. I'm gonna call it favorites. And now here's the problem. You see this? Capture One only gives you these icons, one through nine, and then these. Capture One, please. You need to quadruple the number of icons and you need to make them make more sense, okay? I don't need a, a shovel. <laughs> You know, right? And and a moon and you know, I mean, come on. Well, you know, you, you gotta fix these. All right. So what I'm gonna do is choose the heart, add tab. All right, there it is. I've just added my first custom tool tab. Now it's real simple. Right click, I'm gonna add tools to the tool tab. So I'm gonna add, oh, let's, why don't we add a histogram? Boom. All right, let's add, I don't know, um, base characteristics. That's where we choose our film sim. Exposure, why don't we add clarity? We'll add white balance. So you can see now, now you know how to add custom tool tabs. Those are these things right here. And then these going down are tools. These are tools. You can have the same tool in many different tabs. For example, I have the histogram in my favorites, but I also have it in my exposure one. You see that? It's in both places. I would need the histogram most when I'm adjusting exposure. So I want to have it there. But I might also need the histogram when I'm adjusting color. So I've got the histogram right here. You see that? So that's why Capture One looks so darn confusing because it has duplicates of the same tool spread out over the different tool tabs. Next, I'm going to show you a really handy tip to save you screen real estate. Check this out. If you have a lot of tools on your tab, say exposure, okay? So let's say you have white balance and exposure and high dynamic range and clarity and all of these things expanded. You see that? Look at how I was able to have histogram always stay at the top, but have these other ones scroll in this window area. Do you see that? So what you can do is you can pin to the top the tools that you want to always see no matter what else you're doing with the other tools down below. Okay, so I've got a lot of tools here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the little three dots on the tool that I want pinned to the top. And I make it move tool to scrollable area. And what that does is that drops it down here is I just move these other ones. I drag and drop them all the way down and I'm sure there's probably an easier way to do this. I don't know. But I move the other ones down, then I move the histogram up to the top because what I want to do is have my scrollable tool above that thicker horizontal line. Do you see how that line's thicker than this line here? So anything that's above the thick horizontal line will be pinned, right? You have to make one of them in the scrollable area and then drag and drop the tools around until they're where you want them to be. Now, this is scrollable. If you look, look at this, see? Have a look at that. Check that out. and you can add more than one tool to that area. Let's say I wanted to add base characteristics. That's my Fujifilm film simulations. Let's say I wanna add that always to the top and have it stuck there no matter what. I can click and drag this above that double line, boom. Now have a look at this, see? It's always there. And if I ever wanted to move my histogram back out of it, I can click that and say, 
move tool to scrollable area. Or I can also have the option of clicking on it and going move tool to pinned area. You see that? And it'll move it up to the pinned area. Or I can just drag and drop them up and down. So the ability to pin a tool to the top and have it always there in context to the other tools that you have there, that is a raccoon. Really awesome, clever Capture One Operation Nirvana. That's what that is. We're gonna have a few raccoons as we go through this Capture One tutorial lesson set. So this was raccoon number one. Speaking of tools, I wanna talk about the sliders for a little bit. If you hover your mouse over any one of these sliders and you hold down the Option key, I think it's Alt on Windows, but Option on a Mac, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to adjust the slider. You see that? Use the scroll wheel. Remember that if you don't hold down the option key and you use the scroll wheel, that means you're going to be scrolling through how you had those pinned tabs set up. If you don't like that behavior, what you can do is go capture one, preferences, and tick the box that says scroll wheel changes slider value. If I tick that box, then it reverses it. That means that I can hover over it, for example, here, and just rotate the mouse wheel. But if I want to scroll up and down with the tools, I got to hold down option. It reverses it. Another thing that you can do is create multiple instances of the same tool. For example, in your curve, you've got RGB, you have a Luma curve, you've got red, green, blue, etc. But, you know, flipping back and forth with these while you're making color adjustments can kind of be tedious. So what you can do is add another tool. I'm gonna add a curve again. So I'm adding another curve. Okay, so it added the new one at the bottom and I'm gonna drag it off of here onto here and I'm gonna choose red. Now I'm gonna right click, add tool, another curve, check this out. Here's my green one. I'm gonna drag it off here. Add tool, curve. Let's go blue, drag it off here. Now I've got all three different panels of the tool open while I'm editing at the same time. I can just collapse them. I can move them back here if I want to, put them back. I can also click there, remove tool if I wanna get rid of them. You see that? If you want to reset a slider, you don't double click here. Look what happens if you try and click on that. Remember in Lightroom, if you double click on the name, it resets it. In Capture One, you got to double click on the actual slider itself. See that? Now you can reset the sliders globally, right? Let's say you have it like that, but you also have clarity bumped up. Now you want to reset everything you did in exposure, but not touch clarity. So you would go right here and this little icon right here would reset exposure completely for just this tool. It leaves clarity alone. Do you see that? Or you could reset the whole thing. Check this out by going all the way up to here, reset. You see that? Boom. And that resets all sliders and everything. Okay, so right now when the images first come into Capture One, the ICC profile is already applied. So the film simulations are located under curve in base characteristics. And when you first import the images into Capture One, Capture One will just stick auto there. You want to change that to whatever film sim that you want to apply. So in this case, for these photos, I'm just going to apply Acros. Now what that did was that applied it to one photo. Do you see that? In Capture One, they have a term called variant. A variant is basically the selected image that you're working on. Think of it as the primary image that you're making your adjustments to. And you'll recognize it because it'll have a thicker border around it. So for example, if I click on that and I hold down shift, and click there, you can see that my primary variant is the one with the thicker border around it. The other images that have the thinner borders are called selected variants. And these are usually the images that you wanna copy the adjustments that you made to the primary variant over to the selected variants. So there's a few ways that you can do it. The first is you can do it on an image by image basis using these icons, copy and apply right here. So in this case, I can click on copy, click on this image, and apply. You see that? That's fairly easy. What if I want to do it to more than one image? Well, I can click on copy, and then hold down shift, select a few, and now click apply. Uh-oh! 
what happened? Why didn't it apply to all of them? There is a toolbar that you need to tick on called Edit Selected. That has to be on in order for Capture One to apply it to multiple images, okay? Check it out. See up here? Edit selected was not on, okay? And it only applied it to one. I'm going to highlight that. I click on it to highlight it. Now I am copying from here and I'll paste to, let's say these images right here, apply. Now it's going to apply it because I have activated the edit selected. So if you're running into any trouble with Capture One not applying your styles or your adjustments to multiple images, 99% of the time it's because you don't have edit selected activated. Another way that you can copy instead of using the toolbar is you can do Shift Command C and shift command V on a Mac. Or if you're on Windows, it's shift control C and shift control V. Another thing you can do is copy all of the adjustments from one tool to a bunch of images. Let me show you what I mean. So for example, in this picture right here, I am gonna go into my exposure section and I'm gonna bump up the exposure quite a bit. And I wanna copy only the exposure. In other words, I don't wanna copy the Acros film simulation to the other images. I just wanna copy the fact that I cranked up the exposure to blow it out, okay? <laughs> In fact, what the heck, I'll turn down brightness here, I'll saturate there, I'll do that. All right, so that's what I wanna copy, the way these sliders are in this particular tool right here. And what I do, it's very, very simple. You see this little double arrow, you click on that, and then you can choose which ones to include. In this case, I want all of them from this one tool to be copied over to the other images. So I'm going to select copy copy. Now, make sure that you have edit selected toggled, just like that. Now I'm going to click on the first image and maybe that one. I'm holding down command. Click, 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 right? Multi-select a few images. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on apply. Boom. Now you see what it did? It applied only those adjustments from the exposure tool. It did not apply the film simulation. So if you just want to apply those adjustments from one tool, that's how you do it. There is a tool called Adjustments Clipboard. If you don't see it here, you can add it just like that. You will see all of the different adjustments and you can check off the ones that you wanna copy and obviously paste over to other images. But what else you can do is you can click on the three little dots and you can say, save as style. Now that I've saved it as a style, if I look in my styles and presets, there it is right there. So what I can do is select the photos that I want to apply it to, hold down shift, select them all, and then simply it's right here. Now, all of my images have that style set to them. I don't do the save styles thing personally. I find it easier to just select one image as the primary one like I did in Lightroom, select the other images, and then, you know, copy paste the styles that way. You can reset all these back by selecting all of them, reset, and that'll put them back. When you first open an image in Capture One, you also can auto adjust it, and that's kind of nice. There's an icon right up here. You click on that just once, and it will automatically apply basic styles, what it thinks will make your photo look great. Or you can click and hold down that arrow and you can see what it's applying and you can selectively apply automatic adjustments to the image based on these items right here. There is one more thing I wanna show you before I leave today, and that is the exposure warning tool. In the exposure area, if you crank up the exposure, as you can see, where's the warning tool? Well, it's right here, exposure warning, boom. See that? And that's a very handy way to see what highlights you're blowing out. The other thing you can do with that is you can adjust in the preferences in the exposure area, things like the color of it, and more importantly, the shadows and highlights threshold that that tool will kick in. So play around with that as well. As you can see, the pace that I'm going is a lot slower than I think a lot of Capture One tutorials. And that's because I really want you to pick up these basic foundation concepts before we jump in and start playing around with color sliders. The next Capture One tutorial we're going to have is gonna go right into exposure adjustment, then we're going to go into color adjustment and so forth. So you have some homework 
for next time. The first thing you need to do is set up some custom tool tabs. Just like I showed you, make sure that you have those tool tabs set up in the order and the method that you have your workflow. And then within each tool tab, make sure you're choosing the appropriate tools so that they're there and they're handy right when you need them. The other thing that I want you to do is make sure that you pin the most useful tool at the top, like the histogram or things like that, so that you can have the tools that you need to see all the time constantly at the top. And then if you need to scroll down, you have those tools in the scrollable portion. Import the photos just like I showed you, bring them into Capture One, and apply a film simulation to not just one, but multiple photos. Once you've done that, I want you to pick one photo and then make some adjustments to something like exposure or the color tool tab. Just monkey around with it a little bit, then apply that and only those adjustments from that tool to multiple photos. I really want you to have a solid understanding of the way tool tabs work, the way copying adjustments works, and saving them as a style and preset that you can copy and paste into various photos. And of course, the most important thing of all, the edit selected toggle on and toggle off. Practice with that. Know the difference of when that thing is on and when that thing is off. If you do this and you get this base foundation of being able to quickly move styles from one photo to another and adjustments and things like that, you will be ready for lesson number three because in that one, we're gonna start to get into stuff like adjustment layers and real fine detail and you're gonna get lost if you don't know these basics first. So that's your homework. Until next time. I hope you found this video helpful. These workshops are a lot different than my normal videos. They're much slower paced, they're more detailed, and they require more work on your part. And really, the more work you put into this, the more it's gonna benefit you and pay off at the end. So do the work, do the homework, and I will see you very soon in another video. Take care.